previous episodes, you've seen how to create Oracle Mobile Cloud Service mobile backends. But now, you might be looking for some ideas around designing your mobile backend, some guidance of what we need to do and think about before we start hacking away. What's the process? How many mobile backends should we have? Should we start building the backends first or start with the APIs? G'day, I'm Chris Mira from the Oracle Mobile Platform team. Okay, so let's try and answer some of these questions. Let's start out by formalizing this into a process where we can move between identifying the requirements of our mobile application, hey, you know, we've got to start somewhere, then transpose those into what to design and build in our mobile application. With what we've learned about MCS mobile backends in the previous episodes, we know that they are responsible for publishing both platform APIs and custom APIs from within MCS in a secure fashion using a realm for our external mobile applications to consume. So, first of all, we need to identify the mobile app's requirements, as this is what we're actually building. The MCS part in the end is just a technical solution to achieving our goals for our overall mobile app. Only, what does our mobile app need to do? Once we have a good idea of what the mobile app's requirements are, from the perspective of MCS, we can move on to considering our design by decomposing those requirements into those that can be satisfied by MCS platform APIs, and those that will require us to build custom APIs. In doing so, we will need to also identify any potential existing custom APIs previously built in MCS we can reuse to reduce our development time and costs. Moving out of the design phase and onto the build phase, we'll then, via the MCS user interface or UI, create our mobile backend. We'll configure its realms, roles and users, We'll register the app for each mobile platform we support, and then we'll give the mobile backend keys to the mobile developer to use from the SDK. From there, the mobile developers will then go off and create and configure the app by installing the SDK and configuring it with the keys, and then call the SDK code to do such things like authenticate the user, and all of this will be nicely covered in a later episode. In returning to MCS and the APIs, once we've identified the APIs that are required, then for each platform API that we also require by the MCS user interface, we will configure the platform API for the mobile backend. Then in code, via the mobile application, call the relating MCS client SDK APIs for that specific platform API. And finally, test and fix our code, iterating between the mobile app and MCS development until we're satisfied with the result. We should always test the code, you know, of course. Then you pretty much do the same thing for the custom APIs. Well, it's kind of the same process. Building whatever needs to be built, which may include via the MCS user interface, creating any connectors you need for the custom APIs, any database schemas, creating custom APIs and exposing the API through the mobile backend, setting the required roles. Then in your mobile app, in code, calling the relating custom APIs remotely. And finally, again, we can't get away from it, testing, fixing, and iterating multiple times over your code, over the solution, until you're happy with the results. It's worth noting at the end of this discussion on the overall steps that MCS doesn't enforce that you follow the distinct order I've described here. Now, I describe creating a mobile backend, then say the realm, configuring the platform APIs, and building the custom APIs. But you could do it back to front too create and figure the APIs, then the Realm, then the mobile backend. In reality, in a real development, you're going to have lots of team members doing things in parallel, and MCS can accommodate that if you want to do it that way. During your design, one valid question that might pop up in your head would be, how many mobile backends should we build? I bet while thinking about mobile backends, you've realized because ultimately, they're just a collection of APIs, that we could have multiple mobile apps sharing a mobile backend, or a mobile backend per mobile app, or some sort of other hybrid choice. Let's discuss these options in more detail so you get some ideas of the pros and cons of each. Now, of course, when you first start out, you'll have one app and one mobile backend. There's not so much choice here, but just basically a necessity. But once you move beyond one app to many apps, your first real choice is having a single mobile backend for all your apps. The next choice beyond that is one mobile backend per mobile app. 
And of course, this is kind of the simplest model and we one we think most customers will go with. Another alternative is, however, having many mobile backends shared across mobile apps. So you certainly do have a choice and as usual, the natural question is which one is best practice? Now this really depends on you, your requirements and what you're attempting to build. You need to consider which ones is best for you based on your circumstances, not some other person's circumstances. So such ideas that may change your mobile backend design include, how many apps are there? The level of reuse required, your development team's experience, the granularity of version control required. Must changes be isolated to one app or can you accommodate all of them? Does the team have bandwidth to update and release model apps sharing a mobile backend? Should apps be grouped logically? And have you considered this last point, the MCS realm constraint, which we'll talk about right now. Let's investigate this point on realms in a little bit more detail as it is an important one. Consider we have two mobile apps for a retailer, one mobile app for our staff and one mobile app for our valued customers. Both apps require access to a customer orders API. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna surface that through a shared mobile backend. Now, separately, the staff mobile app requires specific APIs for the staff. So we surface these through a second mobile backend. And in turn, we've created a third mobile backend for customer specific APIs. So ultimately for two apps, we have three mobile backends, one mobile backend for each mobile app, and we've also decided to create a shared mobile backend for both apps to use too. Okay, with that in mind, now let's consider Realms. A Realm is a collection of users who are authorized to use our mobile application. Considering our MCS mobile backends for our retailer apps, we can imagine that we'll have, well, a Realm of staff users for the staff mobile backend, a realm of consumer users for the consumer mobile backend, and we'll need to add both realms of staff and consumers for the shared mobile backend. However, in MCS, a mobile backend can only have one defined realm, and this constraint will impact your mobile backend designs. So, what choices do you have? So, our choices are then to, well, firstly, create a super realm of users share that realm across all the mobile backends and control access by roles instead. Now, this is okay as long as you realize as you bring more and more apps on that require access to the shared mobile backend that all the users need to go in that one super realm and will be shared across all mobile backends and all mobile apps by inference. Okay, a second option then is to create three separate realms around the staff, a realm of consumers, and a super realm of both with staff consumers for the shared mobile backend itself. Now, this kind of sounds like a maintenance headache as we need to start maintaining duplicate sets of users across the realm. So is there another option? Do we have any other options? Well, a third and final option is, well, don't use shared mobile backends at all. Rather, just have two mobile backends, one for your staff mobile app and one for the consumer mobile app. Then for the APIs that you require to be shared, well, expose them twice through each of these separate mobile backends. Now, this does solve the problem, but you might be thinking, sounds like overhead because we've got to start exposing the APIs more than once. But you know, it does have an advantage that it reduces the number of dependencies and objects and things that we're tracking and controlling. We're getting rid of this super realm. And we're also getting a level of use in our applications, which is kind of neat. So hopefully this video has given you some ideas about the bigger picture on designing and building mobile backends, including some of the obvious questions like, how many should you have? And are there any design considerations to keep in mind? You know, the sort of things you need to know at least enough to start drawing designs on the back of a napkin. So from here, I encourage you to watch further episodes about MCS, such as using the platform APIs, building custom APIs, and ultimately rounding out your knowledge about what MCS can do for you.